Chairman Desito. How, how does your uh, bill affect, uh, for instance, the Texas Municipal League, which does lobby on behalf of city, cities, would this prohibit them from paying dues to TML? You would only be prohibited from using money from political subdivisions, so that would be cities in the case of TML, if TML continues to have registered lobbyists on either their payroll or as contract lobbyists. If under this bill, say this bill passed, uh, and then TML would choose, that'd be a choice at that point. If they chose to let go their lobbyist, then at that point, taxpayer money in the form of dues can still come from the cities and go into TML. But this does not no, abolish. There would be no need for TML. Because what TML does is, I found them to be very helpful as far as letting us know what cities, what the needs of cities and not tying up city mayors to having to run back and forth to Austin all year long, all session long. There's a organization that's structured that had to have common interests that are, that are, those common interests are shared with us on a regular basis. And I tell cities, I said, well, you know, just have your TML people come by the office because they aren't, m many mayors or uh, many council members are, are uh, volunteer uh, elected officials. I mean, they, they don't do this for a living. They go to a council meeting on behalf of their city once a week, but they're trying to make a living on the rest of it. I mean, they don't have time to travel to Austin. Uh, and it's a lot of money that the city, that the state, allocates and, and structures that will, that really help cities much more than $41 million worth of taxpayer money goes out to cities. And a lot of that information that we receive, we receive from people they hire to tell us what their needs are. So I don't know if the return on investment has ever been looked at, but I think it's something you know we need to, we need to consider, particularly and then there are other organizations the same as the school boards belong to similar organizations that are structured to bring much needed information to us that these individuals, one, don't have time to do, and one, don't understand the system enough to, to be effective in getting money back to their cities and back to their districts. That's just something I'll consider, I thought of as I was you know, listening to the bill. Well, the nonprofit associations would continue to exist. This does not ban their existence. And, and they would also continue to review, if they so choose, legislation and take positions on it. This just says, look, no more public money going to registered lobbyists at $41 million a year. Chairman Raymond. So with, um, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sure maybe we'll have some more witnesses or essentially resource witnesses like TML and Association of Counties, Association of School Boards, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe they can answer these questions better than you can at this point, but uh, I mean, couldn't they continue um, getting information, uh, sort of dissecting how it might affect their membership or particular members, right? Cities or counties or what have you, and still provide that information to them um, although, listening to Chairman Destel, I wonder, uh, would they still be allowed to provide information to us, you know, um, or do they have to be a registered lobbyist? I don't, I don't know. They, so, can, they can absolutely still provide information to us, and they can also continue to provide information to our local elected officials. But they can't come in, so, uh, so they can lobby us as long as they're not a registered lobbyist? This bill just addresses if you have to be a registered lobbyist, essentially. That's what I'm saying. So what? So those associations, again, I, I'm sorry that I don't know members and chairman, but um, I guess I assume that they register as lobbyists. Maybe they don't. Maybe they don't actually fall into the definition of lobbyist because they're providing us information and providing the county and the city's information. Um, so I don't know if you know that. Like, do you know? For example, uh, Representative, give uh, TML to, to take his example, uh, Chairman Destel's example. Do you know if TML has employees who are registered lobbyists? They have to satisfy Chapter 305, uh, basically, which is the requirements of, of thresholds of when you have to register as a lobbyist. But, but at the end of the day, what this does is, is what I think you know, our government should do, which is, is our local elected officials should communicate with us directly. And 
No, no, I get that, and I and I, I hear you on that, and I think probably everybody up here agrees with with that point. I'm just trying to get to. We probably need to hear from them. If if TML is any TML here, wave if you're here. Just wave your hand. I think, I think I think we do have a resource witness. We but, do, but not with TML. With another group. I'll, okay. I'll call them up next. If yeah. Like. So maybe maybe they could tell us if employees of TML Association of Counties and other associations oh, no, yeah. of of, of uh, public entity or, or uh, subdivisions like that, whether they, maybe they're not really registered lobbyists. I don't know. For registered lobbyists under Chapter 305, it's, it's their multi-part tests. Uh, you know, one of them is that you're spending more than $1,000 a quarter I, I hear you. payment but, for lobbying, and then also the time requirement of 40 hours a quarter here advocating for or against um, <laughs> legislation. So... Well, yes, are, hopefully they, they, they do speak on to that as, as to what they do, but then they, it's, it's their choice. Let me so under this bill, it's their choice. Let me answer my question for you. They have several registered lobbyists. So under your bill, they would no longer have registered lobbyists, right? That's correct. Right. Thank you. If, if, if they choose not to let them go. So basically, uh, the decision point in that is if they choose not to, and this, say this was the law, if they choose not to let their registered lobbyists go, then at that point, public money cannot be used to pay dues or fees. Yeah, I, I, again, I, I'm, I'm making an assumption that TML is either wholly or certainly largely funded by public, you know, money. I mean, money from cities. In the form of dues and fees. Yeah. So I would assume that, 